Hi everyone, James from AIM. I'm here with James Colburn. He does all of our webinars. Um, he's a data coach and obviously a motorsport nut. Um, so today we're going to talk about the Solo 2, which is by far our most popular best-selling item um, that I'm sure many, many people around the world recognize being used on cars, bikes, everywhere. So the Solo 2 is a GPS lap timer, but it also stores all of your GPS data and is a data logger inside as well. So with this device here, you've got the four buttons at the bottom that is for controlling the menu, going through and changing all the settings. Um, you've obviously got lit up here is the backlit display, so there's a multiple different options of colors for the backlit display. Inside the hit top here, you've got the GPS sensor. Um, and on the back here you've got the magnets for mounting which it comes with a backing plate um, that obviously magnetizes onto here and you've got the four screw points here as well with four little screws that fasten into it. At the bottom here you've got your port for charging the device, um, comes with a cigarette lighter uh, cable, obviously it can be hardwired as well, um, you can buy another cable for hardwiring it. So yeah, it comes with about 5,000 tracks preloaded onto the device. So one of the fantastic features is you could turn up at, for example, Donington, um, take your car out of the trailer, or you've driven to the track, or whichever it may be, get onto your bike, turn the device on, it will go GPS searching at the bottom, and then it will bring up all the different variations of the Donington track. Obviously there's a GP track, the short track, wherever you may be, whatever tracks are saved into here, um, and all you've got to do is just simply drive out on track and it will just start giving you lap times. Um, LEDs on the side for your uh, lap times so you can indicate whether you're faster or slower. That can be done on a, uh, a delta time, theoretical time, whatever you want to set it for. Um, and then obviously other sort of features that we've got here is a built-in battery. So it can um, obviously run for probably about a day um, on one charge. I would say sort of six to eight sessions, something like that, sort of, you know, 15, 10, 15 minute sessions, something like that. Um, and, and obviously you can charge it up when you get home. Or like I say, if you're doing longer sessions, you can hardwire it in. Um, so you don't ever go, oh sorry, it doesn't ever go flat. Um, yeah, very popular device, a very powerful device for the money. I mean, at 350 pounds, I believe. Um, yeah, fantastic piece of kit. James, have you got any thoughts on the you know, where, where, where to start? Where to start? Um, Single-handedly, probably one of the best pieces of kit any race driver could have on any budget. If you're racing, the price point of this is something that you should seriously consider because, you know, I always find it really interesting. Um, uh, even on the AimShop site, and, and understandably so, when you go onto the AimShop site, this is classified under um, lap timer but I have to tell you this is not a lap timer um, this is probably way more not probably definitely way more this is something which you know I, I, I personally started with AIMS uh, products a decade or more ago and it was the AIM original AIM, AIM Solo 1 uh, then evolved to the AIM Solo 2 uh, to be able to sort of continue sort of my sort of data education and then since then sort of working with James working with AIM uh, technologies and, and AIM Shop we sort of evolved uh, sort of been able to access all sorts of different sort of technologies and everything but this device I think is um, probably one of the most underutilized devices as well in, in, in racing as well because you see these everywhere. You said mm, most yeah, best-selling yeah. product. The question you have to ask yourself if you've got one of these have you downloaded the data? Have you analyzed the data? Have you seen what it allows you to be able to see because this is the perfect um, entry level into data analysis that will really find um, significant amounts of improvement. So uh, just to, to talk about it in that sort of sense um, if you connect this to Race Studio 3 through Wi-Fi, um, you're presented with an option to download the data. By downloading the data, you can then analyze that particular session using GPS data. Now, oftentimes, GPS data is much maligned. People will say, well, it's not you know, giving you the same level of inputs you would have from a dash um, where, or a logger where you may have channels that give you feet movement such as brake and, and throttle it may give you um, you know steering input may give you all sorts of other variables that you have 
And so is it significant enough a solution to be able to work with? And I have to say, I think the answer is yes. Mm. Um, GPS data is fantastic because it's not only giving you the lap time on the track, but it's a device, and, and I made a video about this and, and I was trying to work out which way it looks on the camera. But basically, if you think about it, when the device is moving, it knows if the device is moving left, if it's moving right, if it's moving up or down, forwards or backwards forwards or backwards um, and so in many respects this is a perfect unit for being able to understand what the driver is doing so uh, one of the things that uh, I think we've done a webinar on this we've done a few sort of scenarios which is uh, for uh, the sort of beginner entry-level amateur club however you want to describe ourselves I'm one of those uh, type of drivers this is fantastic for a professional driver they will also use one of these it's not uncommon to talk to a pro driver who's got one of these hidden in their bag and if you don't think that's true watch some of the races that you will see from SRO, IMSA, any of the sort of series whether it's Creventic or any of the sort of those sort of s solutions it's not uncommon to see one of these somewhere in the car where one of the drivers got one of these and gathering the data. So I, 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 I could go on for ages waxing poetic about uh, the Solo 2. I think it is a fantastic device. Yeah, it's by far the world's most popular lap time. I mean, like you said, professional riders, we, we post stuff on social media all the time, Valentino, Rossi, all MotoGP riders on their training bikes. They've all got, you can clearly see Solo 2s. Everybody uses them. So literally they all use them for a reason. Is, you know, it is by far value for money, by far the best device for anyone who wants to look at lap times, log GPS data, analyze their data in terms of GPS information through our Race Studio 3 software. By far, it's the best device available on the market. Um, it's got secret little things in it as well. Now, there are secrets which people don't know which are quite useful. Now, my first race car, which sounds like D uh, eons ago, didn't have a speedo. I just had a big rev counter in the middle and that's not uncommon for many cars that you see now. In fact what was interesting is when I think I sat in my Formula Ford for the first time there was no speedo at all. You can change the way this dash set up, people don't know you can do this, but you can customise the dash to be able to do different things. So if you wanted this to just show you uh, speed, you could have this as a speedometer. It still records the lap, still shows you the lap each time you go round, but you can use it for example as a speedometer. Housed within the brain of this, this the brain of the Solo 2 is actually more powerful in many instances than the brain that was found in something like an Evo 4S. And we found this out when we were starting to think through being able to do the reference lap time. So this device will allow you to be able to upload a reference lap, which is instead of chasing a predictive lap that the device has set for that particular moment, you can say, well, I was here a year ago and I managed to do this particular lap time. Load that up and chase that. You may be with a, a fellow race car driver who's particularly gifted or really good. You get their lap time, load it up and be able to chase it down. And so there's a lot of things in this system which you know often don't get used as well. So I, I thoroughly recommend having a look at some of those sort of features too to be able to make sure they make the use of it because um, you could use this um, every race, every track, everywhere you're going and find yourself in a situation that there will always be more data than you know what to do with. But then at the same time, you may get that hunger or appetite to be able to do more. And that's when you do go down the sort of the rabbit hole, which I went down in terms of, oh, sensors. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's have a look at what those can do. And then you get into, um, you know, understanding vehicle health and tire pressures and all sorts of stuff. But still today, every single time I go to the track, every single time I take it with me, it's in my bag, I charge it before I go. And if someone's in the garage and they need something or they haven't charged theirs or they haven't used it or someone's not sure what to do, it's 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 rather like I feel sometimes like I'm sort of pushing data analysis on people because I'm like, oh, just have a go. Go on, just try it. And sure enough, you get some serious converts. So love it. I think it's great. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think uh, it's, it's, it's used in everything. Um, and um, yeah, it just keeps evolving and keeps getting better and faster. And yeah, 25 times a second GPS in there. Um, things just keep improving with it and uh, yeah. Long may it continue is what I would say yeah, because yeah, uh, it yeah. is the best way to get people into it. And I think that there's also an argument that people will make which is, you know, and, and, and I respect people who, who uh, sort of, you know, say I'd rather use an app on my phone and everything like that. And that's, that's totally a, a people's choices is, is, um, Crash -proof is important as well. Yeah, there's, there's an element of that. I have seen solos go out windows. Um, where people have then had to do a track walk to go and find it again because they've gone over a bump, it may have dislodged and the, 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 the mountain out, it goes out the window. Now, whether they were using the mount for this, I don't know. 
But then you have to get into the fact that, you know, even if you're using your mobile phone, chances are your mobile phone plus the app would cost more than the Solo 2 in that sort of respect as well. So um, there are other sort of virtues to this, um, which, uh, you know, we could go on for, for ages talking about this. But uh, my other favorite feature, which people don't often think about as well, is that there is a universal lowest common denominator with anyone who's using an AIM device, which is the GPS data. So even if you've got, we were talking today about all sorts of different devices. If you're using uh, the SW4 wheel, if you're using any of the PDM, if you're using any of the loggers, anything that's there. In every device, there is always GPS that is recorded, which means you will always be able to compare data. So even if you rock on up and someone brings out a solo and someone else that says, well, I'm using a, an MXG or an MXS or an MXM or any of the dashes or whatever they're using, you're like, great, let's just look at the data together and you can figure that outlook to be able to view as well. So the universal applicability of the data that is housed in here, if you do get the appetite to be able to use it, allows you to be able to then start using it. And obviously with the software now, you can easily share data files between each other, um, which makes just that analysis just that little bit more impactful in terms of being able to understand how you're driving, how others are driving, and how you can do better. Completely agree. Cool. If you'd like to know any more about the Solo 2, um, come on to aimshop.com. Um, we've got them listed there, all the technical information, details, spec, everything you need to know. Obviously on there as well is a live chat feature. You can speak with one of our friendly sales representatives or if you want a bit more technical information, there's technical people available. Phone number if you want to give us a call. Anything you want to know, pick up the phone, send us an email, whatever it is, and we will be back to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for coming in, James. No problem. Very Happy kind of you. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you.